Um, you received Jesus as the Lord of your life many of you years ago, some of you recently. Uh, if you're a believer, raise your hand. I think everyone here is. And so I'm, I'm speaking to family. Amen. And, uh, and I'm going to speak straight. I, in, in the Mexican culture, God has graced me because in the Mexican culture, you, you know, uh, most times people don't want you to speak straight to them. They want to hear what makes them feel good. But we don't need what makes us feel good. We need the truth. Amen. We need the truth of God's word. And the truth is what will set us free. And uh, if I've had a hunger, especially these last years, it's to know the truth of God's word and to align myself. And that, that should be the desire of every one of us. Um, I'm going to give an advertisement for tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about doors that we can open unconsciously for sickness and bondage to have an open door into our life. Do you know that we can be completely innocent and be abused by someone and the way that we respond to that abuse can open the door to the devil and allow him to even bring in worse things in our life? And so we're going to stop some of those things tonight. Amen. We're going to receive healing. We're going to, if there's, uh, there's a bondage that's been in your life, uh, uh, maybe a habit or a thought process that just seems to control, we're going to take care of that tonight if you will come and, and open your heart. Amen. Amen. We have a, a short video. Do we have the video ready to go? Guys in the back. Yes? Not yet? Well, I'll talk some more. I don't have a problem doing that. <laughs> we, uh, I get with uh, friends like Ron and, and Colette, and we sit down and we start to talk, and it, it could go on for a long time. <laughs> and there's just a lot to share. Uh, we met Ron and, and Colette. I didn't remember, but Colette said that Twyla was the first to just to reach out to them. We had a at that time, the winter of, it had to have been 83. Did you leave in 83 or 84? 84. In the winter of 83, we had a Bible study at our house, and I think you taught, didn't you? Well, we were there. We were there. Yeah. Uh, and, and anyway, that's how we got to know Ron and Colette and their family. And, uh, and it's been an honor. It's been an honor. And you know, the, the, the friendships that we form in our lives affect our lives. Who do you allow to speak into your life? Who do you allow to, to uh, have a, a position that they can speak a word to you and you receive it? Or at least you consider it in line with what the Word of God says. We have become a group of people, I'm talking, I, I, I've, I've realized, you know, we, we think in the United States that we are a group of people different, but do you know there are things that in Mexico, we think the same as the Mexican people. There's hardly any difference in some ways. Oh, food and some cultural things here are different, but you know that insecurity is wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Hurt is wherever you put on one. My eighth grade year, I missed 45 days of school, lying to my mother and telling her that I had a stomach ache because I didn't want to get beat on again the next day. Uh, at the end of that time, I uh, kept saying I had a stomach ache, and you know, pretty soon the principles of God's word, God's word began working in my life, and I had a stomach ache. And at 14 years old, I had a bleeding ulcer. My mom and dad, my family, we were not born again believers. But my mom and dad sent me to a summer vacation Bible school at a Pentecostal church. And the first day, the first day of June, at one o'clock in the afternoon, 1969, I received Jesus as the Lord of my life. And I was immediately healed. I went home and that night I read the first, I read the book of Matthew, the whole book. The next night I read 
the book of Mark, and the next night the book of Luke, and the next night the book of John, and I repeated that in my first relationship with Jesus Christ as him being my older brother. I saw that in the scripture. And, I, and instead of being the picked on one and, and the weak and the unprotected, I became the protector. He worked in me. He changed me. Amen. And you see, as we seek after him, uh, uh, the, the problem I see, folks, is most of us, we don't seek hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. You can come to church without fault every Sunday for the rest of your life, and that will not be enough for you to step in to the high, high things, the deep understanding that there is in our Lord Jesus Christ. He has so much more for every one of us if we will only take the time to find out in his word what's right. Have you ever meditated on Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 where Jesus said, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, I don't know about you, I, li I like practical, thinking practically. You know what the word righteousness means? It just means what is correct with God. Yeah. And so if you will seek after him and seek after what is correct with God, we have thousands of churches in our country that have their tradition, have their way of believing and thinking, and it has no power in it because it's not God's way. Yeah. It's a man's way. Yeah, that's right. And if we will humble ourselves enough to say, Lord, I really don't know, but you do. I determine to trust you. And what I find in your word, I will believe, independent of the circumstances that I'm experiencing at the moment. And if we can do that, then there is always an opportunity for us to grow. Amen. Yes, amen. Always. God is always faithful. I, isn't it interesting, you know, in the last, I don't know, maybe 20 years, it has come out so strong, that song that we just sang, God is good all the time. He is only good. Amen. He is only good. Yes, but there is something that many times we don't include in our doctrinal thinking. God is the one who planned for you and I to have free will. Free will. I don't think any one of us would give it or have given a man free will if we'd have been the creator. <laughs> we'd have made robots. But God doesn't want you to love him and serve him because you have to. He wants you to do it because you want to. Because you make the determination that you will seek after him and you will know him. You see, the, the principle in the word of God is it says if, if we will seek after him, we will what? Find him. Find him. And, 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 and you see, as a young man, I started finding him, and I'm still finding him. Uh, this year, I, 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 I celebrate 54 years of knowing the Lord Jesus as my Savior. And uh, I've never gone back into the world. I've been lazy like a lot of you have, too. But, uh, but you see... If we will allow him to be our teacher and allow him to help us, there are so many opportunities ahead for us. There is a divine calling upon your life that you haven't stepped into the fullness of yet. Every one of us here. And, 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 and don't expect, don't try to copy someone else because that would just make it ordinary mm -hmm. do what and, and, and step into what God has for you he'll lead you it's like this morning I, I, I have two messages and, and I, I couldn't figure out and I, which one Lord which one's for the morning and which one's for the evening I, I knew that these are the two messages that I'm to share with you but, uh, but I have clarity now and, and you know why? Because I, I don't hear with these ears. I hear with these. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we perceive. We perceive what's needed where we are. Amen? Yeah. Just a few words about what my wife and I, Twyla, uh, do. Um, we have four children. Uh, our oldest is 46 years old and 
and we're still young in the Lord. And uh, we, we uh, our kids all live here in the States, and uh, thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for their lives and uh, God's protection upon them. Twala and I believe that our calling to Mexico is all of our lives. We don't have a home here. Many people ask, well, when are you going to come back? Well, we don't have anything to come back to. That our home is there. Our life is there. And um, we took over uh, in the year 2000. Twala and I had gone to Mexico in 1988. Um, 89, we started teaching in a private school for nine years. Twala, nine years, me eight. And uh, during that time, I was involved in a a mission group out of Laredo, Texas. Then in the uh, year 2000, or 1998, God spoke to my heart about starting a church in Saltillo. In the year 2000, we opened the doors first time for, with, for a Word of Grace a church uh, in Saltillo, Coahuila. Saltillo, Coahuila is a very uh, Americanized city. We have a 6,000 employee Chrysler plant. The Dodge Ram is assembled there. The Chrysler has a 4,000 employee plant, and they assemble many of the smaller uh, economy SUVs uh, that are being sold here now. The, the hunger for the young people in Mexico is uh, to be wealthy. And many of, many of them we have children there that are eight years old. They might not have a fridge in their house, but every kid has a cell phone. And so the culture of this country is, is, uh, is in, invading Mexico. We as a missions group, we started out, Twal and I, doing what missionaries typically do, feeding the hungry and helping to, to clothe those that have need. And we found out very soon that that food is gone right away, and the clothes wear out, but the Word of God doesn't ever wear out. Amen. And so we saw that teaching, teaching God's principles, teaching God's ways was our principal calling, and that's what we've done for the last 34 years. Um, my wife and I are just a few, mo year, few months apart in age, and in September, my wife uh, uh, turned 68 years old. Don't tell her I told you. And I am 68, and we've lived 34 years in Mexico, half of our life. It's a milestone for us. And so uh, we have uh, directed a Bible school, and we have many, many children in Mexico. And the pictures you saw there, one of those young men lived under a bridge in the state of Oaxaca, in the city of Oaxaca. And he came to us, and we had him for four years and trained and taught and trained him and watched God transform his life. And today he is the director of a uh, rescue mission. They have 100 men that have been on drugs or alcohol and 30 women, and they are transforming their lives. He's a strong man in the Lord. We've watched the Lord use him. They built a 40 by 80 uh, uh, a sanctuary with Mexican money. And, 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 and we're seeing that we as, in America, you know, we've reached out to lots of countries and we always reach out with money. And we reach out with things. And the countries of the world don't need our things. They need the knowledge of what we know. Yes. They need the knowledge of the Word of God. They need to see that the same God that, that is, is blessing and has blessed this country and will continue to bless this country if we seek him and stand in the gap for him. Amen. Uh, he doesn't change when a river or an ocean is crossed. But we as missionaries in Mexico, we taught them to depend on us. And that has had to change, and it is changing. And we are part of that group of changing the way that the people of God think. Do you know that Jesus... In, in John chapter 15, John chapter 1, verse 15, he started his ministry 
and it was during the time John the Baptist was put in prison and Jesus began to preach and say the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel I'll guarantee that some of you think that that word repent means something that it's not the word repent there doesn't mean getting down on your knees and begging God to forgive you the word repent there is metanoel and it means changing your mind changing your mind say this with me or say, no, say this to the person beside you yeah say it to him you need to change the way that you think because some of the ways that you think are not correct all of us all of us and you know what changes the way we think it's the word of God if you will allow, I, I remember uh, uh, my wife was attacked by a spirit of fear when we were farmers in North Dakota. I, that was my dream to be a farmer and I was disobeying God and, and I allowed a door to be opened to attack us and it attacked my wife and that spirit came against her life. And thank the Lord <laughs> just through a miraculous set of events someone put into Twala's hands Charles Capp's little booklet God's Capsules and she read that little book three times a day out loud in desperation we didn't know anything about faith I was a graduate from a Bible school but I didn't know and she kept doing that and she'd read it morning and noon and night about 25 20 to 25 minutes each time and she read it out loud every time and and I would come in from the field farming at night sometimes and I, I, I'd want to say woman well, would you just be quiet I'm tired me a great man of faith <laughs> and she didn't quit and she didn't quit and she didn't quit and three months later we looked at each other and we said hey, you know that, that's that fear hasn't been around for several days and she's still one of the most peaceful persons that I know today. The Word of God changed her. The Word of God set her free. And so I went before God and I said, God, I've never seen anybody do this before. And I had never seen anyone do it before. <coughs> and I said, if this is true, here, you know, me thinking I'm a great man of faith, you know, then I'm going to live healthy. And I'm going to study your word and I'm going to speak your word and I'm going to fight against headaches and colds and flu and I have defeated them I haven't had a headache for over 40 years I haven't had the flu for that long but I would be out driving my tractor and listening to a cassette of healing scriptures that I had made myself and I listened and I listened and I made big mistakes one time uh, you know I I, uh, I ha still have some symptoms of uh, what do you call it? myopia um, in Spanish it's myopia uh, it's nearsightedness and so anyway I at six years old I had the measles and this eye was 5.5 and this eye was four I you know pretty much blind and so anyway I started saying the hearing ear and the seeing eye the Lord has made even both of them Proverbs 20 verse 12 and I was out cultivating corn one day and I heard this voice tell me Carrie healed people don't wear glasses and so that I said well that's right I took my glass and I threw them out the cab of the tractor window and the next round I tried to get out and find them <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't find them so those that I'd heard talk about being people of faith I thought that I had to just never saw a bit better but I went around saying I'm healed <laughs> for a year I did that one year I, one, one of those times I, I killed a deer couldn't see it driving I was against the law don't do this don't do this it's like people years ago that quit taking their insulin to think that doing that they were forcing God to heal them well they died 
And so at the end of that year, God saw my sincerity, sincerity and, and he spoke to me. And he says, Carrie, you know, what about this problem? This, well, we were broke. We had no money. And I was trying to use my faith for him to supply. And he says, what about this need, Carrie? I said, well, yeah, that's a big one. I'm, I'm believing you. I'm trusting you, Father. And he brought up two other things. And I said, yeah, Lord, I'm using my faith. And he said, now about the glasses. He says, you can still believe me and wear a pair of glasses. He says, so you should probably go get a pair. God will speak to you that way if you'll let him. <laughs> and so I did. Do you know that today this eye is 3.2 and this eye is 2? So instead of getting worse, my eyes have gotten better. The history in my family is a macular degeneration. And you know that that is hereditary. And uh, my wife and I take the vitamins, but we use our faith when we take the vitamins. Amen. You, you see, speaking words, it's like Jesus told them, seek first the kingdom of God and the ways of God, what's right with God. And you know what? Everything that you will need will be added to you. Amen. Everything. Amen. And the most important thing that will be added to you is spiritual understanding and knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be able to see. You, you learn that if, if I'll be merciful to others, God will be merciful to me. Yes. And you know, Twan and I have made bunches of mistakes. One time I signed a document for a student from Columbia to come and study with us. And the directors before in the school had done that. And so I thought that was just normal stuff. And I got a letter in the mail from immigration, Mexican immigration. And they invited me to come into their offices. <laughs> and I went and sat down. And this man smiled and looked at me. And he said, showed me the letter. And he says, sir, who gave you the authority to sign this letter? And I looked at him. And I got a sober look on my face. And I said, no one. <laughs> And, uh, and, and uh, I said, what, what does this imply? He says, well, it could be a prison term. He says, oh. I said, is there any other way? <laughs> and he says, uh, well, or a financial fine. I said, well, I'd prefer the fine. He says, oh, don't worry. We'll get in touch with you. I said, well, how, about how much? He says, oh, 10,000 pesos. And at that time, it was $5,000. And, and so I left that office, and going to tell my staff and my wife that we owed that much money for me signing this letter that I shouldn't have signed. And I walked out the door, and a man that I'd gotten to know named Chuy Castillo was just coming in the door the owner of the biggest newspaper in the city. And, uh, and he looks at me and says, well, hi, Carrie, how are you doing? I said, well, not too good right now, Chewy. And he said, well, what's going on? And I told him, and he said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And I never heard another word. But you see, we had forgiven people that had done horrible things. And we had determined that even though our flesh didn't want to ever love them, we determined to love them. And if you'll be merciful, you see, those are principles that won't change ever. God established them. If you will be a giver in every way, God will give to you at your time of need. I remember one time we went three months, we couldn't pay the rent on the property that we were at. The first month, you know, I determined we were going to pay our staff first. We weren't going to let them go hungry, and so we couldn't pay the rent. And the owner called us, and the second month, the owner threatened us. And the third month, we were getting ready to be evicted. And, and Twal and I had gone before the Lord. Lord, have we opened a door? Oh, you should, you should have that phrase ready in your heart. <laughs> have we unconsciously allowed the enemy to steal from us? And if you have a relationship close enough to the Lord, when God doesn't speak, that's just a good sign. 
And so we knew that we hadn't done anything to cause that to happen. It was just the enemy co to coming to steal from us. And so he kept on thanking the Lord for his provision, taking care of those things that we could. And uh, the third month, we received a check for $15,000 and caught us up and went about two or three months ahead on the rent. God will always provide if you will trust him. And sometimes, you know, we, th we think, you know, it has to be McDonald's style, you know, instant food, instant response. And, and sometimes you and I have to grow to connect. Sometimes the provision that God has for us, uh, not everybody obeys him. Most times, you know, God doesn't cause money to fall off the trees for you. He'll use another person. And not everybody is obedient to the Lord. But if you will keep trusting him, there will be, there will be always someone who will obey. Amen? Amen? And so, and so in that, what I'm talking about is, is we determine that we're going to trust God before anything else. Any other word, any other experience, any other attack that comes against us, we're going to determine that what God has said about that situation, that's going to be the determining factor for us. Say amen. 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 And so, Christians... We call ourselves born-again believers. And do you know that being born again, or being saved, we use that word saved. I don't like to use that word uh, for the person who received Jesus as their Lord. They are born again. They didn't get saved. Because every day of your life, you are being saved. Being saved is in health and healing and provision and protection. All the things that you can need now and forever is in the salvation that Jesus has provided for us. And so when, when we were born again, that was just a beginning. Babes in Christ. And, and what can babies do for themselves? Breathe. And cry. And, and, so, and so in that, that implies, the Bible says that we, as babes in Christ, were to desire the sincere milk of the word. And you and I need to get these things established. And it's possible for a Christian, it's possible, are you hearing me? It's possible for a believer to receive Jesus as their Lord and stay a baby for the rest of their natural life. And never grow. And so if we're going to grow, and, and, and you see, God loves us all. He loves, he loves every person in this city and in the world. He's their creator. But he's not necessarily their father. And so in you and I as Christians, we can receive Jesus as the Lord of our life, but not necessarily connect with his provision. Not necessarily connect with our identity. And so there are some needs that we have, desperate needs. We need to know God, who He really is. As a young boy, I was about 15 years old, had known the Lord for six months, and uh, was attacked with the flu. Do you notice how I said that? I was attacked with the flu. I didn't have the flu. And you'd be surprised how many of you I pray, I pray for people uh, during this six weeks. I've prayed for lots of people. And many times I have to say, well, you know, I have cancer. Well, well I say, amen. I guess there's no reason for us to pray if you're going to have it. Amen. So we look at any kind of sickness as an illegal attack yes. against us. Yes. It becomes our enemy. Yes. See, depression is our enemy. Insecurity is our enemy. <coughs> Amen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, bitterness is our enemy. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness is our enemy. 
And we resist those things just as we resist the darkness of the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because they are not a part of us. We are new creations, new creatures in Jesus Christ. And everything, everything should be new. If we can believe it, it will be that way. Amen. Amen. And so, and, so, and so in that, if I understand who God is, and I had to find out. I remember one time at 15, I went to the church on a Wednesday night to testify. That was testimony night. And, and I got up and I, and I said, well, I want to thank the Lord for giving me the flu. <laughs> because uh, I wasn't reading the Bible like I should. And, and while I had the flu, I started reading the Bible again. Thank the Lord for giving me the flu. Well, what foolishness. <laughs> what foolishness. And I had to learn. I had to learn that that was wrong. I had to learn that God wasn't like that at all. He's the best father there is. Amen. Or ever will be. Once he says something, it never changes. And you see, if you will believe the word, by Jesus' stripes, you already were healed. Mm -hmm. If there are symptoms of sickness in your body, then you, then you resist it with every bit of your being. If you need to go to a doctor, you go to the doctor. And if they prescribe a medication, you take the medication, but you take it by faith. But you don't give up your faith. In that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We had a lady come from southern Mexico. Her son asked if he could bring his mom. He was on our staff. And we said yes. She couldn't get up off the bed. Arthritis was killing her. And we ministered to her over a period of six months. And she kept going to the doctor. And at the end of that six months... She received a letter from the doctor saying that she was free from arthritis. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? People did some things to her and she couldn't forgive them. And you know what's going on in her body today? Arthritis, arthritis again. And so folks, oh, I challenge you to be brave. I challenge you to be strong. I challenge you to be a true believer in everything that God has accomplished for you and in you in Jesus Christ. Amen. And you will have to become stronger than most of the people around you. Yes, right. yes. And you will have to spend more time in the Word. Mm -hmm. And you will have to learn to speak more, but correctly. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. And not speak what you feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not speak what you see. Mm -hmm. But speak what you believe. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you'll do that, my friend, more and more and more, the windows of heaven will open Amen. to you. Amen. <clears throat> and you will be that person that people will look to you will be that person that when somebody doesn't know how to do what they have to do, they'll come to you and they'll say, well, I, I, I don't know how. And they'll probably expect you to do it for them because they see something in you that they know they don't have. And you'll know that you, you can't personally give it to them, but you know the one that can. <laughs> and that's Jesus. And, and if we know that, I'd like us to look at two sets of scriptures. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Ephesians, chapter 2. And uh, we'll start reading. In verse 4. And it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, 
Even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You see, your Father, God, your Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and your Teacher, the Holy Spirit, they are the kindest beings that there are. His kindness toward us. And you need to convince yourself with the Word of God that if anybody will love you, God is the one who loves you. He loves you. He sees, he knows more about you. He knows what you're going to do. The next error that you're going to make, he already knows. And he still loves you. And he's still willing to raise you up as high as you'll allow him to. As much as you can believe, you can receive. Jesus talking to that father when he brought his, his demon uh, attacked son and the father said if there's anything you can do please help us and Jesus didn't even answer that question he just says if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes." this so say this with me I I am a person, a person of possibilities of possibilities and you know what determines your possibilities you tell me. Your ability to believe. believe. And I, I see in myself, and I think probably for most of us here, my biggest responsibility right now, and my biggest need, is to convince myself to believe even more. Yes. To convince myself. You see, the Bible has been put in your hands, but who's the one that decides to read it? We do. You do. Who's the one that decides if I'm going to follow the principles? You do and I do. We're saved by grace. There's things that God has done for you and for me that we didn't have any part in. We, couldn't, we can't change it. It is what it is, and it's great. But you can determine. It's, it's just, there's things that we don't understand in our mind, but we can believe it. Free will. A God that will allow that person that he created to determine against him and go to hell where his enemy, Satan, abides. You know, most of us, we're trying to save things that aren't savable. We're trying to fix things that the other person doesn't want fixed. One time, we had a situation where a husband and a wife, and this man was just beating his wife, being unfaithful, and we turned him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, for the saving of his soul. And he came to me and he says, Oh, Pastor Karen, please don't do that. Please. <laughs> I said, Well, Eduardo, then you're going to have to submit to God's way. Because you have before expressed your hunger for him. And the devil has led you to something that you really don't want to do. And we watched him change. We watched the Lord work in his life. You see, why do you do what you do? Paul wasn't turning that person over to the enemy in Corinthians 1. Because he hated that man. He loved that man. And that was a way that that man had an opportunity to be saved. And so we take on God's ways. We take on His principles. We are lovers of the brethren. We're lovers of humanity. But we don't participate with all the brothers in what they do. And we don't participate with those outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. We determine who's going to influence. We determine Who's going to have that place in our lives? Let's go on here. Verse 7. 
that in the ages to come he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest what? Any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The plan of God for every person here is good. Good works, that your life produce good things for others and for yourself. And then in the last part of that verse, which God has before ordained that, what? That we should walk in them. Who decides that? I do. And you do. So ask the person beside you, are you walking? Say it, I want to hear you. Are you walking? In the ways that God has designed? In the ways that God has designed? For you? For you. And I think every one of us, if we're honest, we'd have to say, well, not every one of those ways. Yeah. It's interesting. I determined, like I told you, that I was going to live healthy. I've been attacked with cancers. 1985, I was walking out of the kitchen in our house to go to work, and I was a lawn service man. And I went down on the floor in the living room, and I couldn't get back up. And uh, spent a whole day using my faith, and nothing happened. And the second day, I, I was praying, and I, 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 I just saw myself looking at the yellow pages. And so I asked Kuala if she'd bring me the telephone. Well, you know, that's antique now, the, the yellow pages. And, uh, and I looked under chiropractors, because I wasn't going to go to a medical doctor. In our family, there was a history of back problems. And every time uh, one of my brother or an uncle had an, an operation on their back, it, it always produced pain that never went away. And so I called, so I looked, and, and there was one of the ads for a chiropractor that just seemed to light up. And I had Twyla call the man, he came to the house, which didn't happen in those years. And, uh, and uh, anyway, he told me, you know, I had a heat pad on, and he says, you, well, you got the wrong thing going there, you need ice. And I was able to get up in the afternoon, and I went into his office, and he took x-rays, and the, verte the, the disc between the fourth and fifth vertebrae was ruptured and uh, and so he treated me and I used my faith and uh, a month later I was back working he had told me you'll never lift more than 35 pounds well you can come and visit me in Saltillo we have a house it's about 4,000 square feet and I lifted at least half of the bags of cement 110 pound bags to pour the footings and to build that house You have the right to be healed of anything that comes against you. There isn't a sickness that has been designed that has a right against you. And if it's there, it's either because you've left a door open or you haven't perceived that attack in the right way and haven't handled it in the right way. And I'm not saying that, it, that in, in one minute or in ten minutes. Most of us in healing, we're looking for miracles and not healing. Right. See, I, I, uh, I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm a shade tree mechanic. I'm a shade tree carpenter. I, uh, I raise chickens. I, I just like to do things with my hands. And, and so I've always got some kind of a scratch or a cut. And, and you know, it, it doesn't, I don't go to bed at night trembling, trembling because I'm so fearful. I, it's healing. And divine healing is the same way. That which was destroying the person in the prayer of healing stops. And healing begins. And we don't look for a change overnight. But we demand that that process begin with our faith. Not because of who we are in ourselves, but because of whose we are. 
And you see, you have to, you have to establish that. When sickness comes against me, and, and it does, just like a, against you, I don't look at it like most people do. Most people look at sickness and, oh, and they get fearful. And, and sickness is just, is, is like somebody trying to rob from my house. What would you do? I'll talk to you dads. What would you do if you had a young child and they broke down the door to your house and were going to harm your child? What would you do? Would you run and get in the closet and let them do whatever they wanted? No, you'd protect your child. And so, this is your house. You're the, respons you're the one responsible to maintain it. And how do you do that? By faith in the promise of the word and by obedience because as we obey the Lord and walk in his ways, then we have rights that are established by the blood of Jesus and his resurrection from the dead. We walk in his ways. Since 16 years old, I've been a tither. And you know that some of those times, it, it just seemed like it wasn't working. But uh, do you know that during the pandemic, we had to close our church. One time for nine months to follow the law. And, and in our situation, uh, being foreigners, we were the first that would be... <laughs> picked on, if you want to put it that way. So we determined to follow, but, but we made sure that we were ministering to the people that were our sheep. And, uh, and you know that during that time, financially, we were better off than before. God just provided for us miraculously during the pandemic. He met our needs. Just recently, you know, in the change we've had in our economy, all of a sudden the peso that was 22 pesos equals one dollar went down to 16 pesos to the dollar. And all of a sudden our income went down 28%. Years ago, I'd have, I'd have said, oh, this is a disaster. And my wife and I looked at each other and we said, well, here's another opportunity to grow. And we are growing. I pray that you are. I pray that you are. And all these things, simple things, do you know what they, they do in you? They raise you up. You see yourself different. You see God differently. You see the work of Jesus differently. It becomes more real and more valuable in your life and you start to expect from yourself greater things than you did before mm -hmm. amen yeah. and so and so in that we're the ones that make the decisions I'm not talking about being righteous by my works it's the blood of Jesus and my faith in his work that has made me a son of God or you a son or daughter of God. But there is work that you will have to do. It's not work to be loved by God or work to be accepted by God, but it's work to change the way that you see God, the world, the situation that you're in, Jesus Christ, and you as a born-again believer. Amen. You have to see that all things are possible yes. to you. Amen. And we're not, we've been, we've lived the times when we had lines of people praying. And you know what they were, their trust was in? that anointed evangelist or that anointed minister that was going to heal them. And we're learning that God may use that person and may help us connect with that person. Uh, we have, that person may help us connect, rather, with 
the healing that is ours, the deliverance that is ours, but they are not the source. Right. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning to be a conduct. You see, folks, say this with me. The Spirit of God, Spirit of God abides, in me, abides in me and out of my innermost being, of my innermost being flow, rivers of living water. flow rivers of living water. When I receive the baptism, when I receive the baptism in, the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the Spirit of God came upon me first in His power, first in his power to be a, 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 an example, to be an example and, a and a witness for the kingdom of God. And tongues, and tongues are a great help for me, help for me in, praying in praying the perfect will of God. The will of God. You see, that's you. Amen. That's you. And, uh, and you know that some of you here, I, I'm, I'm not judging anybody, but I just know averages. Some of you didn't speak one time in tongues this week. Some of you have had the opportunity to receive for years and you've not done it. Look at the person beside you and tell them, don't be lazy. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, I, if, I, if I looked over you and said, you know, God has spoken to me. And I have a million dollars to give to one person here. Oh, you would be all, everybody would be smiling the prettiest you can. And here God has offered to us. It's like, do you know that in being born again, God doesn't have to do anything new. Jesus doesn't have to do anything new for you to be born again. It's already been taken care of. You have to receive. Yeah. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't have to do anything. He's been sent. He's here. It's your job to receive. I've been, this, this last two years, I've had the honor to lead, lead about, over 350 people into the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but I find that I have to teach them. If I can have three hours teaching, I can guarantee that at least 80% will speak in tongues right away. Because most of us lack faith if we haven't received yet. And even those of us that have received, why don't you pray every day in tongues? You've received a supernatural language that is direct with God. Satan doesn't understand it. I watch people, they have an idea for a business. And they go around telling everybody about it and asking their, 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 their uh, advice. And the next thing you know, the devil has shut off their plan. Or somebody else took it. There are some things that you should just pray out in tongues. Instead of telling everybody, let him teach you. Let him open doors. <coughs> Connect with him. I'm not telling you anything new, new, folks, but you know, do you know what? We call ourselves believers, but we don't do many times what believers do. We've got to start doing what believers really do. And, 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 and fighting against sickness and fighting against poverty. You know, if you don't have the money that you need right now, there's a supply in heaven that you're not using it's already there. It's already there. It doesn't have, God doesn't have to do anything. Because it's already been taken care of. And he has an endless supply. And so I challenge you to connect with him. I challenge you to be a true believer. I, I, I've been going at it slow. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book. And, and I think Brother Hagen has one called it's The Real Faith. Mm -hmm. 
the real faith. Well, I'm writing this for the Spanish people, but I'm writing it in English and we'll translate it to Spanish. So in some time in the future, I'll have, and, and I see that we, so, too, many, too many times we, we think about God and we put on this religious cap. <laughs> and, and, and God is so, if I can put it this, down to earth. If you will believe his word, it will work every time. Amen. Now, it might take you some of, some of those things. It might take you five or ten years to really walk in it in its fullness. And it's not because God's not faithful, and it's not because it's not true. It's because you have to be convinced to believe and learn how to walk that out. Mm -hmm. Why don't we think, you know... Uh, Who was I talking to? Was it you talking about a mathematician? Yeah, Doc, Doc Horton. Well, Doc Horton was a super intelligent man in, in mathematics. Well, imagine that you've just learned how to add and subtract and you say that, well, that's enough. I can, I can help them plan for the next spaceship that's gonna take off with just addition. <laughs> And subtraction. You think that'd work? No, no. Then why do we think about that like that with things of God? Yeah. Yeah. Why do we think that we can be born again and oh, I'm just waiting for God to do? Well, you're going to be waiting the rest of your life because He's already done and it's up to you. Yeah. It's not up to Him. Yeah. It's up to you. So I challenge you folks. Don't let the news that you hear, don't let the feelings in your body, don't let the thickness of your wallet or whatever affect your belief in who you are. You're to be a provider for others. You're to be the supply of the Spirit for those that don't have. You're to be the one who is the strong man or the strong woman for others that are weak. And so get that out of your mind that your pastor is going to be the one to pray for you. And he will, yes, I know he will. But if that's your attitude all the time, then you're just a needing social service spiritual service, somebody else has to do for you what God designed you to do for others. Amen. And we are surrounded with people today that the devil has tricked into believing if they have a false identity of themselves. Their, 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 their perception of the world is completely wrong. And every time we don't come against and attack that when we have the opportunity, do you know what we do? We allow what is happening in our country to advance. You just need to be a strong man or a strong woman for Jesus. Amen. That's the best way to keep our country going on the right track. Amen. That's the best way to resist the works of the enemy in our government in all places. Mm -hmm. Amen. Isn't it exciting? Amen. Who the speaker of the house is? Yes. <laughs> God knows what he's doing. <laughs> if you and I can just agree. And you know that Friday night we were here and we were praying about that. Some of you should have been here. If you weren't working or you weren't you could have been here. You could have participated in that. But there were about six or seven of us. What happened to you? You call yourself a believer? The Bible says that we're supposed to gather together. How often? Once a month? When we see the coming of Jesus closer, is, he, is his coming closer than ever before, do you think? Mm -hmm. Then we should see you in this room every time there's an open door. Amen. Praise God. 
That's what the instruction in Hebrews is. More. You say, oh, Carrie, be, lighten up. <laughs> I love you yeah. in the Lord. And I don't think I'm speaking anything that your pastor hasn't said. He might have been a little more peaceful about it. <laughs> so how do you want to live the rest of your life before Jesus comes? Yeah. Do you want to be that person that's always looking for someone else? I remember those years. I was that way. I was always looking for someone to meet my need. And I found him. <laughs> and I'm doing better every day at it. You're not going... The offering that you gave, thank you very much for participating with us. But you know what? Help or not, you are not going to stop me. And you're not going to make me work. I mean, you're not going to make everything work for me. Because the need that I have is bigger than you can personally provide. So I've had to learn to trust him. Oh, I challenge you to do it, folks. I challenge you to do it. So this, this morning, my, my, my challenge to you, and I guess I've got, to, I've got to follow my notes. Just one more, one more thing. Look, look at, we're going to study some, some scripture. Okay, I'm just going to read it, and you follow along. Okay. Uh, Second Peter 1 Peter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Who has to obtain that faith? Do. I do. With us, through the righteousness of God, our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied, that's Second Peter 1 2, unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Savior. Well, how do we get that knowledge? We have to learn it. Who, who becomes a student? I am the student. You are the student. It's my responsibility. Say it with me. It's my responsibility. Amen. Quit putting this stuff off on God. Amen. God's not the cause of your problem. He is the, he is the answer. Amen. But you're going to have to seek after Him. He's not going to force you to do it. He's offered. And that's free will again. Verse 3, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the what? Knowledge, Knowledge of him. Oh, wow. You see, listen to this. It's wrong. Say that. It's wrong. It's wrong. For, a believer For a believer not to know the ways of God. Not to know the ways of God. Not knowing, not knowing and living by the ways of God, ways of will, God. Produce will produce what the believer least wants, what the believer least wants but it will not produce spiritual, but it will not produce spiritual or, natural rest. or natural rest. Study the books of the, in Hebrews chapters 3 and 4. Israel couldn't enter into the rest of God, the rest of faith, because it couldn't be convinced to believe. They couldn't be convinced. Colossians 1.10. Colossians 1.10. And here he's talking about what should be happening in our lives. He says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Say this with me. I don't know it all. I, don't know it all. I still have to grow. I still have, I still have to know more. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7. And here Paul is convincing the, the Corinthian people to give to the need for the church in Jerusalem. But here, look at what he says. He says, therefore, as you abound, 
And, 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 and that is the word in, in the Greek, it means superabound, in great measure. As you abound in everything, what? In what? In faith. Say this with me. I need to abound in faith. I need to abound in utterance. I need to abound in knowledge. I need to abound in diligence. And I need to abound in giving. So, and he's, so he said, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. What grace was that? The grace of giving. Mm-hmm. But he said it, as you abound in all these other things. So that's, say this with me, that's the, that's the normal life for a believer. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. He says, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit and one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving together. Striving is working. Mm -hmm. Working together. Working to be a believer. Working to be a person of faith. Amen. Amen. Colossians 2 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Who does that? I do. First Thessalonians 3 10. Here Paul is praying for a people. And uh and I guess you could say that's what I'm trying to do this morning. He says uh, in First Thessalonians three ten, night and day, praying exceedingly that you might that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Say this with me, Lord. Lord, I ask you to perfect, ask you to, perfect to teach me. And help me in that which is lacking in my faith. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse three. Second Thessalonians one three. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you. All toward each other aboundeth. Say this with me. That's what other people should be saying about me. And the last one, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one and verse five. And he says this. And he says, and besides this, giving all diligence. And that word diligence there is just the word speed. All speed. Do you know that some of us work, work better under pressure? Is that you? Are you the one that at, uh, you have a homework assignment when you were in school or now that you are in school and you do better at about 11 o'clock at night when it's due the next day? <laughs> Some people are that way. But here he's saying to add all speed, and that means giving the proper amount of time and attention needed. Add to your faith. Adding to your faith. And here we see all these things. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly, brotherly kindness, and charity. And he says in verse 8, he says, For if these things be in you and abound... If these things be in you and abound, they make you. So in, in the end, let's say this. If I will attend to these things, if I will attend to these things, they will make me. They will make me to be, to be who God has designed for me. Who God has designed for me to be. To be. Because you see, without him. There's nothing that you and I can do. Amen. But in Him, if it's possible for one, it's possible for you and for me.
if God has promised it. I had uh, a person, and I think Brother Hagan talked about this. I had a person come to me and say, Oh, Pastor, pray for me that I don't have any more temptations. <laughs> And I told him, I said, well, I'm sorry, I can't pray. I guarantee that you will have. But the word of God says that you have the right to be an overcomer in every one. Amen. Mm -hmm. I had another man, a pastor. I was ministering years ago in a church. And uh, we had a prayer line and he came up and he says, oh, pastor, please pray for me that Jesus speak to me. And so I opened up my Bible and I showed him one of the Gospels, and I said, you see the red letters? That's Jesus speaking to you. <laughs> yes, sir. Too many times we're expecting God to do what he's put in our hands to do. Yes. Yes, sir. And I guarantee you, my friend, if you'll take this word, if you'll walk this word out that you've heard this morning, the rest of your life will be exciting. Yes. Challenges, yes. Discouragements, they'll try to come. But if you'll keep this in, in the front, they won't stop you. You'll keep growing. The power of God will increase in your life. Do you know why some people are able to lay hands on people and they connect better with the power than other people? They've proven themselves to be trustworthy. God's not going to let your, his power flow out from you when half the time is the power that you flowed out would destroy or hurt his work on his people. You have to prove yourself trustworthy. And I'm going to go back. Proving yourself trustworthy is, is coming to church. Proving yourself trustworthy is being a giver and a tither. Proving yourself trustworthy is, is not speaking the latest gossip that you heard about your pastor. I, 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 <laughs> I've had people tell me what people were saying about me. It's, we speak what we believe. Now I want one more thing. The next time you come to church, when you sit down, you take the place of authority. You don't have to, you don't, no, we don't need you up in front. There where you're sitting, in your spirit you do this, okay? You look around in your spirit, man, and you say, how is the atmosphere here? Is this atmosphere, is, has, has someone brought in something that would hinder the moving of the spirit? Is there something here that could hinder what God has put in my pastor to minister? I take authority and I speak freedom. Spirit of God, have all freedom in this place. I bind the works of the enemy and I set myself to receive. And do you know what? If you'll all do that, oh, you're going to have times in the future that are supernatural better than you've ever experienced before. And you know what? It won't be about him. And you won't leave saying, whoa, the pastor was really anointed today. <laughs> You'll say, we participated with the Holy Ghost together. Yeah. Yeah. And he used our pastor. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Growing up. <clears throat> growing up. And church... I think you're ready to hear this. I think it's time for you to hear this. And I think you can do it. I think you can do it. And so I'd like us to stand together. And before we end, just remember folks, I, uh, I challenge you to come tonight. If there's a physical attack against your body, please come. There are things that we haven't paid attention to many times that, let me, let me just say this. I was in uh, Denison, Iowa, uh, last Sunday. And uh, a lady that's just been faithful there for years. Uh, we ministered the word we're going to minister tonight. 
And, uh, and there were several there, but she was there. And, and uh, her heart, had a sim has, there was a symptom that the electrical message, you know, your body works on electricity, was not getting to the heart correctly, and, and there were problems in the heart. And so I laid my hand on her, and, and, I, and I asked her, Sister, is there, is there something that happened in the time past that broke your heart? And, and, and she just started to weep uncontrollably. And we prayed for spiritual and emotional healing in her heart. And then she received her healing. Amen. And many times there's been attacks or things that we thought we took care of. You know, do you know that forgiveness, unforgiveness is one of the biggest doors that we unconsciously open for the enemy to come in and attack our health or our finances or any, any way. I don't know about you, but I, I, me being picked on as a little boy, do you know that sometimes I have to I'll be dreaming in the nighttime, and that dream will come against me, and I'll wake up, and I'll have to say, Devil, I already gave, I forgave those people. That's not who I am anymore. You just leave me now, because yeah. I have forgiven them. Amen. I will not take up unforgiveness again. Amen. And so you may have to resist that unforgiveness a hundred times, but the hundred and first time, you just keep on doing the same thing. And you disconnect yourself with what the devil is trying to do. Some of you have faced horrible things, unjust things, but that might be the door that the enemy has used to come against you, to steal from you. You didn't do anything wrong, but not responding in the correct way mm -hmm. has left a door open. So I challenge you to come. Amen. I want to pray over you. Raise your hands, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here. Thank you, Lord, that these people have sent me as an ambassador to the country of Mexico. And so, with that spiritual connection, I speak over them that no weapon formed against them prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, I condemn according to the word of God in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. Thank you that that is these people's heritage in you as sons and daughters of God. I ask you, Lord, to teach and train and raise us up in the areas that we've talked about in Jesus' name. And everyone say it together with me. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.